All right, so in this video, I'm going to be solving a vectors question, which uh, I have been getting a lot of requests to solve. Uh, it's a difficult question. Actually, it's not difficult entirely. There is a part to it, which is kind of challenging. So that's the part that I want to get to as soon as possible. So let's read the question. It says the diagram shows a shape made from seven identical equilateral triangles. And uh, this shape is sort of like a hexagon. I mean, it's a hexagon up until here. Okay, and then when you add this triangle, it's no more a hexagon, but anyway. So yeah, uh, it says OA equals to P, OF is equals to Q, express as simply as possible in terms of P and or Q, FB, FE, so on and so forth. Okay, uh, yeah. So now if, if you have been uh, watching my videos on vectors, there's something that I always suggest my students is that uh, before you actually read what the question is asking uh, you to find out, find out things that you can immediately, okay? Uh, so basically here's what I mean. So this vector as we know is P. So there are a lot of other vectors which are also going to be P. Now bear in mind that these are all equilateral triangles. That means all, all these lines that I'm highlighting are going to be parallel to P. Okay. So that means in vector terms they're all going to be equal to P. And why? Because they're equilateral triangles which means every angle that I'm marking here is going to be 60 degrees. Okay. So I've got to keep that in mind which means that this is going to be P from G to P and from F G is also going to be P. Okay, I'll put an arrow so you know exactly the direction which I'm talking, uh, the direction which I'm referring it. And uh, so that's that's uh, so these are all the P's. Now let's let's have a look at all the Q's. So this vector is going to be Q. This vector is going to be Q. This vector is going to be Q. And this will also be Q. Yeah, hopefully I haven't missed anything out. Okay, now let's see. Now let's see what the question is asking for. So in the first part, it's asking you to find FP. So FB is can be achieved by going from F to G and then from G to P. So that's simply going to be P plus P, which is 2P. Pretty simple. FE. Okay, so in order to uh, go from F to E, we'll have to go from F to G and then from G to E. So F to G is basically positive P and then from G to E is positive Q. So in simple terms, it's going to be P plus Q. There you go. Easy does it. Part two. Part two says x is a point on FB and fx is to xb or in the ratio three is to one. Express ox as simply as possible in terms of p and or q. Okay, so we can't really see where point x is, but what we do know is that it's on FB, and we know that uh, they're in the uh, fx to xb is in the ratio three is to one. So what I'm going to do is now that you've hopefully understood uh, how I figured out all the vectors, so I'm going to clear this mess that I've made here. Now, x is a point on FB such that, uh, and sorry, fx and xb are in the ratio 3 is to 1. So that means this point has to be closer to x than it is to p. So it has to be somewhere over here. Okay. Now, or maybe just slide it down a little. Yeah. Okay. So fx and xb are in the ratio 3 is to 1. That means f to x is 3 parts and x to b is one part okay now let's see what the question is asking for the question is asking us to express ox as simply as possible in terms of p and or q so ox that means we got to go from o to f and then from f to x okay so o to f is pretty simple in fact it's right in front of us it's p now how exactly do we work out fx so i'll do it over here so fx is basically three fourth now why three fourth because uh, the ratio is 3 is to 1. That means this has been divided into 4 parts and fx is 3 fourth of the total. That means it's 3 fourth of fb. Now fb we just worked out is 2p. So 3 fourth of 2p if you work it out. So 2, sorry, 2 twos are, 2 ones are. So it's going to be 3 upon 2p. Okay, so I'll write it over here that fx is basically 3 upon 2p. Okay, now how, how exactly did we decide that we're going to go from O to X? So we're going to go from O to F first and then from F to X. OF is Q and then FX is 3 upon 2p. We just worked it out. So let's write this nicely. 3 upon 2p plus Q. Okay, so hopefully you've understood that. Now, this is the part that I've seen a lot of students are struggling with. So I'm going to try and break this down as much as possible and hopefully you will have a solid understanding of how to tackle questions like these, inshallah, by the end of it. So uh, part three says, why is the point on BD? So let me highlight BD or underline, whatever. Uh, quadrilateral O, X, Y, F is a trapezium. Okay, so O, X, Y, F. We can see O, we can see X. 
We can't see y, but we can see f, okay? So O, x, y, f is a trapezium. Now remember, trapezium is a quadrilateral that has just one pair of parallel sides, okay? So if O, x, y, f is, again, I'm gonna clear this up. So I'm just gonna leave x over here. Now, if O, x, y, f is a trapezium, what's important for us to understand immediately is what exactly are the two lengths that are parallel? So O, x, y, we can't see y, but what we do know is, is that y is a point on BD and O, x, y, f is basically what makes a trapezium. So let's see where y is. So it's, I don't know, maybe it's somewhere over here, who knows, or over here. Again, we don't know, but let's say it's somewhere over here. And, oopsie. Okay, there you go. Now, so here's how this works. We know that this is a trapezium because that's what the question says, which means that we also know that this will have a pair of parallel sides. Okay. Now, the real question is that what exactly are the sides that are going to be parallel? So for that, let's see. OF, remember, is Q. B to C is also going to be Q. C to D is also going to be Q. So one side is OF and the other side is x, y, okay? Which basically means that there's absolutely no way that O, x and x, y can be parallel. Why? Because O, f is obviously in the direction of Q. And if, hypothetically speaking, x, y were to be parallel to O, f, it had to be somewhere on this line, okay? I mean, it had to be a part of this line. X had to be somewhere on this line. So x, y would have been then parallel, okay? But that's not the case. So that means that this, this goes out the window that O, F and X, Y cannot be parallel. So that brings us to the answer because if O, X and X, O, F and X, Y cannot be parallel, that means it's definitely O, X and F, Y that are parallel, okay? So that's, so that basically means that O, X and F, Y are parallel, okay? Now, let's see what the question's asking for. The question's asking us to express x, y as simply as possible in terms of p and or q. Okay, so how exactly uh, do we go from x to y? Let's see. So what, we, what we'll have to do is we'll have to use our understanding of parallel vectors, basically. So we have ox, right? The question was kind enough for us to figure out, for, that it made us figure out ox. So it's right over here. I'm highlighting it as we speak. And what I need to do is I need to somehow get my hands on f, y so that I can make, make a ratio and compare the coefficients and decide what uh, is basically, yeah, what is basically x, y, okay? So now the real question is, how exactly do I get my hands on f, y, okay? Now this is where the concept of, you know, thinking outside the box comes in, okay? So my objective is to start from f and go all the way to y, okay? Now, obviously one option, one possibility is that I can go from f to x and then from x to y. But the thing is, I really don't know what x, y is in terms of p and q, okay? So here's what I'm going to do. Here's what I would prefer. I'm gonna go from f to b and then from b to y, okay? Now I'll tell you why. I know f to b is going to be 2p, okay? Again, no brainer. And then b to y, has to be in terms of q, okay? It has to be a multiple of q. Why? Because bd, bc is q and cd is also q. So this line is following the direction of q. And if I stop at y, that means it has to be maybe one, maybe 1 1.5, 1 1.75, who knows, times of q, okay? So here's what I've done. Pay, pay close attention to what I'm saying right now. So I am trying to go from f to y, yeah. And here's what I've decided, that if I wanna go from f to y, I'm gonna go from F to B first, let me double check, yeah, F to B, and then I'm gonna go from B to Y. Now, F to B, I know very well, is 2P, okay? Now, as far as BY is concerned, like I said, it has to be a multiple of Q, okay? Because we are going in the direction of Q. Now, how far are we going, or what exactly is the length from B to Y? That's something we don't know, so I've just called it K, okay? So KY. Now, now that I have my hands on FY, and I know that FY, as I mentioned over here, that FY and OX are the two parallel sides. So that means I'm gonna compare this with OF, sorry, OX, which is three upon two P plus Q, okay? Now what exactly am I going to do? I'm gonna make ratio, okay? So I'm gonna pick the coefficients of P from both the vectors. I'm gonna divide them, two divided by three upon two, and I'm gonna compare it with the coefficients of Q from both the vectors. So that way I have my hands on K. So K 
over 1. Now cross multiplying means 3 upon 2k is equals to 2, k is equals to 4 upon 3. Okay. Now I have my hands on what? I have my hands on k. So this means that fy is basically 2p plus 4 upon 3q. Okay. Now this, it doesn't end here sadly because we still have to work out xy and my phone's battery is low. Anyway, I'll try to finish it real quick. So fy, f, uh, sorry, xy. Now, how do I go from x to y? I can do that very conveniently. All I have to do is I can either go from x to f and then from f to y. Okay. And that's, that's the approach that I'm going to take. So I want to work out x, y, right? So I'm going to go from x to f and then from f to y. So x to f, now we just worked out fx, so uh, if I'm not wrong, yeah, we just worked out fx, so that, that was 3 upon 2p, but now it's going to be minus 3 upon 2p because we're going in the opposite direction. So minus 3 upon 2p plus fy, which is again something we just worked out, so plus 2p plus 4 upon 3q. Now it's just a matter of simplifying. Now remember, this is paper 2, so you know, don't feel ashamed uh, for... Don't feel ashamed when you're using a calculator. So 2 minus 3 upon 2, although I could have done this without a calculator, but anyway, is half p plus 4 upon 3q, since there's nothing uh, with q that can be added or subtracted. So yeah, this is a question that I noticed a lot of you guys were struggling with, and hopefully this, uh, this makes it easy for you guys. Uh, let me know what you guys think of this question in the comment section. And that's all for this video. See you guys in the next one. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.